Hey guys, so I noticed that only a small percentage of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Uh, so if you like my content, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to make sure that my content gets to you on time. Hey guys, uh, so this is a pretty um, often requested guide on how to level. Uh, so today I want to briefly run down on some basic leveling tips and give you guys some advanced uh, leveling tricks and tips that will really help your push to challenger. So uh, first off, let me start with the basics. It's really, really basic. Uh, pretty much this is your standard leveling um, guide. Everybody kind of follows these leveling uh, breakpoints. These are like very, very standard. If you're not win streaking, if you're not lose streaking, this is pretty much what you do every game. Level to 4 at 2-1, level to 5 at 2-5, level to 6 at 3-2, level to 7 at 4-1, level to 8 at 5-1. I'm not going to go too much, much into it because uh, there's a lot of guides out there that cover this topic. So, um, but this is pretty much the base. And then, but here's your basic leveling guide about to do uh, doing aggressively. So you can do this either from a win streak or a lose streak. Obviously, if you're doing it from a lose streak, you can disregard level four or level five. So if from win streak start or <clears throat> or if you have a lot of gold, what you can do is level to four at two one, level to five at two three. That's really early, right before the carousel. Level to six at three one, level to seven at three five, level to eight at four two. Um, so, like I said, this is your aggressive um, leveling pattern. Often, this is the case if you're win streaking or you're um, you have a lot of gold. And this aggressive leveling pattern pretty much guarantees you never bottom four because of how healthy you are. Okay, so with those two out of the way, um, let's talk about like the nuances of leveling. So, in the mid game, uh, especially in challenger streams, sometimes you see people randomly level for no reason at all, or what it looks like no reason at all, and. Um, <clears throat> Generally, the rule of thumb is that if leveling leaves you with 30 gold or less, just do it. Um, it's not always true, but generally this is true. Especially if you, you have a unit that you can put in that spikes your board, uh, this is absolutely worth it. Why is this the case? It's because the difference between 12, 30 gold interest and 50 gold interest is actually not that much. Like, you're not losing much gold to level. So you get 8 passive gold versus 10 passive gold. And then you can easily recuperate the, um, like, uh, the, the 20 gold difference. Uh, over like two rounds so you maybe lose like two to three gold for uh in terms of interest for leveling and then um it's not a really big deal but the reason why you don't um roll down to like go down to zero gold is because the difference between zero gold and 50 gold is huge to build from zero gold up to 50 gold will take a lot a lot longer so that's why if you um have 30 gold or less you can just level uh let me go ahead and show you a clip uh, i was watching Asa the other day and then here oh oh yeah here he even explains like 20 to level i should probably just do it he doesn't he doesn't really put anything meaningful um but then he levels anyways and then he rolls once or twice to find some meaningful upgrade and then that's his entire board but basically the reason why he's leveling here isn't for any like uh, like super important reason but because he has like enough gold to left up, left over that is worthwhile to level. So that's like leveling mid game. You can um, use this anytime. And then uh, I want to talk about pre leveling at two one. So uh, this one is another common mistake I see low elo players making, or not low elo players, um, mid level players making. So you really only level to two one if you're looking for a specific three cost or multiple like two cost. A common example is if you have Elawi plus Quinn and you're looking for a GP or MF. I, I don't know why this is allowed here. This is GP or MF. Um, also, like another case, if you have Elawi and Mercenary uh, Emblem, and you're looking for a Quinn GP MF, it's pretty worthwhile to uh, pre-level. Uh, another example is if you have a lot of two-star units, you already have two-star units, and you want to play strongest board. So you're not looking for any more um, one cost. You're not looking for any more two-star one cost. And the strongest board is putting a random three cost. Uh, often, this is the case um, when you're playing strongest board. So that's a good time to level. And here I have a clip of uh, like a pre-leveling mistakes. Let's just say you're looking for a one cost, then pre-leveling is always, always, almost always a mistake. So here is uh, one of Solus's tournament games. But right now he has a, a Singe pair and a Twitch pair, right? He's looking for one or two to spike his board, but then here he pre-levels. And then uh, he now has a lot lower chance of hitting Singe pair and Twitch pair, right? Um, so like even though he was in a really good spot and pre-leveling is fine here, it's still incorrect uh, to pre-level there. Sure, he might have still hit the Twitch anyways or the Cinch anyways. But regardless, what you should do is you should stay level 3. Then if you hit a Cinch 2 and a Twitch 2, then level. If not, I will stay level 3 for a little bit longer. 
and then try to hit these upgrades, then level. Because your odds at uh, level 3 of hitting a, a Twitch 2 and a Sinch 2 is a lot higher. So I think this is a mistake. I would say most people would agree that it's a, a mistake. Another question or another mistake I see a lot of people making is early leveling to 8. So basically there's two reasons why you want to early to level to 8. Uh, so leveling to 8 early either means leveling at 4-2, 4-1, or 4-5. Because uh, standard leveling to 8 is 5-1. But here's the two reasons why you want to early level to 8. The reason number one is you want to hit a 2 star forecast early and spike. Uh, so this can there's gonna be a lot of reasons for this, um, but the most common reason is because um, you're a pretty low HP and you need to spike right now. The second, uh, uh, the common reason to level to A is you want to put in a random synergy to spike. So basically, uh, if your uh, goal is option A, if you want to hit a two star forecast, you need to make sure you have at least thirty gold to roll with because not only do you have to hit your uh, two star forecast, which costs twelve gold by the way. Um, you also need to upgrade the rest of your team. You can't just sell all the rest of your units to only look for your carry. Uh, so 30 gold at least, at the very bare minimum, to roll with, in my opinion. Uh, if you have multiple of a pairs of your units, then this is 30 gold uh, rules. That's true, but I would still make it a habit of leveling with at least 30 gold left. So here I have an example of a... It's a I mean, it's a meme game. So it's a, a Soju... So it's just playing for fun, but... <laughs> Yeah, let me let me slow this down, sorry, so you can kind of see it. Okay, but basically here, so just at 20 health. He's level 8 right now. He's going to level 9. It's, a, it's kind of a joke in the meme. But basically, after he levels to 9, he doesn't really have that much gold to roll with. Right? Here, he goes to level 9. He has 20 gold to roll with, 25 gold to roll with. Um, basically, he'll never be able to hit... You know, he'll be able to hit like a few of his units, but he'll never be able to hit... like his main carry and his supporting units to make us stable enough board. So here he hits Yone, um, but even then, he's probably not stable in this lobby because he doesn't have his up, uh, the rest of his board upgraded. Oh, anyways, okay, so enough of him molding, but basically this board right here is actually not that strong because he doesn't have a lot of supporting units. He's missing Oriana, he's missing Janna, he's missing Yumi, he's missing like a few crucial units to make his boy, uh, board function. Um, so in the end, he does, I think he go finishes seventh with this board, which is not bad. Uh, but basically, like if he just rolled down at level eight, he would have hit the same Yone board. He might not have Kaisa, sure that's fine. But I guarantee you, he would have like Janna a two, Yumi two, Janna two, Ori two, um, Brom two, etc. Right. So the only reason why he wasn't able to hit his supporting units was because he didn't have enough gold left over when he leveled. So obviously that is kind of a meme clip. But regardless, it kind of demonstrates my point of um, how much gold you need to uh, have when you level. And then uh, the finally the last common question I see people uh, asking and mistakes people making is when to go level 9. So basically the general rule of thumb is you only go 9 if your entire board is 2 starred. But even then, even if your entire board is 2 starred, you should probably not go 9. Um, <laughs> so like, but still that's the general rule of thumb. And that like the more general rule of thumb is that if you if you've even lost a single round at level eight, you should probably just roll eight. And then the hardest part for people to understand why not go nine is because you can actually make your board a lot stronger at level eight. You just need to see it. So here's all the common mistakes that I see people making. First, uh, keeping like dead units like Ezreal and Ziggs. Sometimes these are this is okay because it's providing you scrap, but more often than not, even like adding scrap is not worthwhile. Comparing uh, compared to just adding in like a strong utility unit like like Oriana um, The second mistake is people not seeing potential one star five cost outs like Jace So often like adding a single Jace or a Yumi or a single um, Like uh, Kaisa or something makes your board a lot stronger and finding just one of them can stabilize you and then finally um, Not seeing a three star three cost uh, out angle so a lot of times if you're playing like uh, especially Heimerdinger, you can actually just roll at 8 and go for a 3 star 3 cost instead of going at 9 as that will spike you a lot harder. So here I have a game of Goobums, he's playing, um, he's uh, it's one of the tournament games. He's currently level 8 with an entirely, pretty much a fully capped board minus Tarek and, um, Tarek and Oriana. Um, some people here would go 9, but uh, Goobums knows that like uh, basically even though that uh, his board is fully upgraded. He still chooses to roll because, uh, first off, going nine here is very low value. There's not a single unit that he can just put in at like a one star, that would uh, spike his board. Uh, spike his board. And second of all, he doesn't have enough econ 
to go knight and roll for like a, a powerful like a two star five cost like jace right he's he doesn't have the option of going for like a super super capped out board so here he makes his decision to roll eight and he looks for several upgrades so here first off he looks for terror two he looks for oriana two he looks for yumi two um uh, second off he looks for one star five costs here he looks for jace a, a single jace could replace this erzo and will be a lot stronger and then third of all he looks for the timer dinger three out so then here's his board a few rounds later he hits the jace he hits the yumi two he hits the terror two he does not hit the oriana he does not hit the timer dinger yet yeah, this even but even with these small improvements uh terror two and uh, jace and yumi he was able to uh, top two from the spot uh, so basically it kind of goes to show that like your board at level 8, like this board is not stable, but this board is stable. Why is this the case? It's not because of like huge upgrades. It's because of like very, very small incremental upgrade uh, upgrades to his entire team. He's not looking for like an insane, uh, like he's not looking, he's not rolling an A for like some insane uh, things. He has 20 gold, 24 gold. 24 gold is absolutely enough to find a Jace one, right? So basically... Most of the times, at level 8, your board can be upgraded, you just have to see it. In this case, he's able to identify like several uh, important things to upgrade his board, and was able to top to this turn. Uh, so, pretty well played. Um, and I will say, uh, that's pretty much all I have for my like advanced leveling guide. I probably missed some things, but I think I covered a lot of the things that uh, people might not be super familiar with. Okay, so take care.